So Greer is a real estate business uh, focused on development of bespoke buildings um, for global clients uh, looking for a real estate solution in Africa. Um, how Greer came about was um, it was uh, founded by myself and business partner um, uh, Bronwyn Knight. Um, he was CEO of GRIT and uh, our partner in uh, Dubai, uh, Gateway Partners. And together we always knew that there was an opportunity um, for real estate development across the continent. But something done with global best practice, but understanding the nuances of Africa in the specific countries that you deal in. So we set about um, uh, setting up uh, the business. We raised equity up front um, and we had partners following us through. Um, and what we've done over the last uh, three years is um, committed to close on $400 million worth of development across Africa in hard currency, so dollars or, or euros. Um, over 90% of our collections is in that currency. Um, and what we do is we create real estate solutions for companies looking into Africa. And that is um, across all, all segments. So we are sector agnostic. Um, so whether it's residential requirements for an embassy or whether it's warehousing, um, we adapt our real estate model to suit what our clients' needs are. Absolutely. So the precinct for us is, is very exciting um, uh, for a development in Mauritius of this nature. Uh, we believe it's the first of its kind. Um, it's truly an A-grade office development um, that we're doing. So our finishes are going to be uh, very high end. Uh, we've got some global companies um, that are uh, coming into the building as tenants with us. Um, one of the announcements that we made was Dentons, um, which is a global uh, law firm, uh, which was a really, really good uh, tenant. And what we've done is we've put a, a solution together um, to create this office node um, that we felt was required in the north. Um, and for us, it's a big investment um, that is going in, into the north. Um, I think it al also, um, you've got your city centres and your um, office hubs uh, within Mauritius, like um, Eben and Port Louis. Um, and Grand Bay has got a lot of global companies that are setting up in Grand Bay. You've got a, a lot of expats in, in Grand Bay. And um, I think this is going to be uh, the node where, you know, the business in the north is going to operate out of. You know, the world is going through a global pandemic, as we all know. Spending money at the moment is, is, is difficult because a lot of people don't want to um, spend money. Um, you know, we don't know what our businesses, you know, what they were two years ago to where they are today is very different. But what we we looked at is in every crisis there's opportunity and the opportunity is that what we do is we focus on real estate and what we have is clients that want to work with us because they focus on what their business needs are. We tailor make that solution in real estate to suit their needs to allow them to focus on their core business and for us to make the investment um, was quite an easy decision because of the tenants that we had within um, and that wanted to come into the opportunity. So if you look at what we have signed up and what we are, have under construction at the moment in Mauritius and ac across Africa, it's close on $400 million. So it's a significant investment that we've made in the last two years. Um, some would say it's courageous, but for us there's a definite um, business concept um, and idea and what we're doing is we're executing on that. So I think in, in the pandemic, there's, there's obviously going to be ebbs and flows. Um, you know, the first thing that, that normally gets affected is your, your high-end retail um, because people are, are uh, you know, more uh, curious about uh, what they're going to be spending their, their money on or, or what's going to happen to their, their jobs or what is the, the, the new normal going to be during this COVID. Um, but through this, again, there's opportunity. The opportunity is we need to start getting the housing market going again. You know, in the last two years, uh, a lot of the financial institutions have held back um, on lending um, because of that uncertainty. Um, as soon as the market starts um, uh, resolving itself, the first thing that normally comes back into play is uh, real estate and, and construction. So there are different uh, nodes that will require um, investment and different buoyancies at different stages. 
tourism is going to come back in leaps and bounds. No one's been able to uh, travel for the last two years. Mauritius has always been well versed for tourism. Uh, the amount of uh, work that uh, Mauritian Tourism is doing at the moment, um, we were talk talking to some of our partners the other day, seeing what uh, the bookings are looking like for December already, and it's a very promising sign for Mauritius. So as soon as we get that foreign investment coming back into the country, we think that the country will recover very, very quickly. Uh, with that comes a lot of opportunity again. Um, also with what's happened in the rest of Africa, the violence taking place in, in, in various uh, countries, we do think that Mauritius has positioned itself well uh, with regards to um, international investment as well as um, expats looking to come and work uh, from Mauritius. So there's two sectors that Mauritius has put itself in, in our opinion, uh, that will be able to move forward very quickly. Um, so the reason why we chose uh, Mauritius as our, our headquarters is First of all, the, um, the DTAs, the tax treaties between the um, African countries and Mauritius, um, the ability for foreign investment to come into Mauritius, um, and the fungibility um, but of currency coming out of the, the, the countries that we invest in. Um, it was easy to, to have that um, as, as a head office. The other thing is, um, as an African country, Mauritius is very easy to bring diaspora back uh, to Mauritius and also for expats to relocate uh, to the island. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great country to live in, the lifestyle is fantastic. So, you know, a lot of other African countries it's difficult to get that level um, uh, of staff. Um, what we've found in, in Mauritius is it's very simple uh, to get really, really good people at the right levels that we need because of the geography of where we're sitting in. Very interestingly, what we've uh, found is immersions are all over the world, uh, which is a great thing. Um, and we've been able to attract some really high quality uh, staff back to Mauritius um, that were placed in the likes of Canada and the UK. Um, so the majority of our team is actually made up um, of Mauritians. Uh, probably 80% of our um, office base is uh, in Mauritius is, is Mauritian. Um, we've also got some interesting stories about uh, what we've done with women in the work, workspace. Um, so we uh, have got projects going on in Kenya at the moment that we're working with an institution called Build Her. And uh, we've got Mauritian women um, that are running the development from our head office in Mauritius. We've got women in Kenya um, that uh, are involved in the project and even on construction site. Uh, we've got a program that we're developing uh, women as well. So I think it's uh, one of the first women-led uh, projects and being a Mauritian uh, company, uh, we've been very uh, proud to announce um, what we're doing with that. Um, but going back to the point, uh, the level of staff that we, we, we have in Mauritius and what we've been able to attract to our company, uh, we're very satisfied um, you know, with the output that, that, that we've got and also attracting that you know, diaspora back into, into Mauritius um, has been really a good thing for our business. There's always challenges. Um, with every um, business, there's inherent uh, challenges. You know, for us, we need to understand the regime of the, um, the country, uh, more specifically what's happening with the, the taxes in the various countries. Um, you know, we invested uh, within the group, we invested um, across 14 uh, African countries, um, and we have to be on top of what is happening with legislation all the time. On top of that, things like global pandemic, um, you know, no one predicted COVID uh, two years ago. So, you know, for us, we always need to understand we need to be flexible and what's got us here is not going to get us there tomorrow. And what I mean by that is every time we have adversity, instead of, you know, looking internally, uh, what we need to do is understand what the crisis is, evaluate it and make a decision to move forward. So, you know, I think for the country of, of Mauritius, it's in a really good position at the moment, even though, you know, COVID has been very difficult um, to bounce back from, from, from something like this, um, it's very well positioned. So we do see that there, there are still going to be challenges with the likes of retail, but where there's challenges with the likes of retail and, and uh, potentially some other real estate classes, we've got the likes of data centers that are booming at the moment. 
We've got the likes of um, um, you know medical facilities that are uh, that are needed across the continent. So you know where you've got a, a specific uh, sector under pressure, there's two or three sectors that are buoyant, and we just need to make sure that we follow where that buoyancy is and not be stuck. Um, you know, with a business decision we made last year, but rather evaluate every decision almost on a daily basis at the moment. Because before COVID, you could almost make a decision that lasted a year or lasted two years, where in the last two years, what's proved to us is the decision we make today could be different tomorrow. And, you know, we really have to be flexible and adapt to the situation that gets put in front of us.